Hello, and welcome back to Madness in the Method, the premier Nicolas Cage podcast on all of the internet. My name is Tobias, and with me as always is my friend and trusted co-host, Christopher. Hello, everyone. Hello. And uh, as, yeah, you guessed it from the name, maybe, or at least my presentation, we're going to talk about a Nicolas Cage movie today. Um, and today we're talking about the, uh, the, 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 the action crime drama, uh, A Score to Settle. In 2019. Uh, written and directed by Sean Koo and co written by John Newman. Starring, of course, Nicolas Cage and no one else you know except for Benjamin Bratt, who's in like three scenes. Huh. Oh, no. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classic story. You know, a guy takes, t- takes, the, takes the rap for his uh, crime boss, uh, boss, spends 20 years in jail, and comes out and has, from the title, a score to settle. That's that's how they describe it, but I think this is more of a like fa- almost like a family drama, or it, it wants to be. Mm. And, yeah, and I think the, like the, that, the, that, the revenge, that the revenge action movie comes in a way. Yeah. yeah, the revenge thing is more of a backdrop. Yeah, sort of. Um, it's, it's not the main story, <laughs> I guess. No, and that's that's part of the problem with this movie. But we'll we'll mm. get to that mm. first and foremost, like we always do. I got to ask you. Had you seen this movie before? No, never heard of it. Oh. Never seen it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you? Oh, well, me neither. No. Like the last like five episodes, <laughs> I didn't know this existed until I read it on our list. Yep. Same. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot of really bad movies lately. Ever since, uh, uh, like after after Mandy, there hasn't really been any good ones. I think like good, good. We had, no like, potential. Fi- yeah, they were fine. Mostly fine. Um, well, and and yeah, well, sure. The last one was really bad, <laughs> yeah. but before that, it was like it's fuck. Again, it's only like three movies since Mandy, so ah, that's true. <laughs> it feels like so much more though. Yeah, but it all it all sort of blends together. I I started to notice after doing this. I people are asking me because I talk about I'm doing this podcast, going through all Nicolas Cage movies, and they're like, yeah. which is the best one?" And I was like, "I can't really." <laughs> Most of them just. Become one huge blob. I don't. I, it's hard to tell them apart, and especially to see which in which which order they came. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it, it feels like was Mandy this season or last season? Where are we? Yeah. Did you see the humanity bear bureau after <laughs> Mandy or before? I own. Yeah. Espe- especially. I mean, we had a lot. Because that's when it started last season, the mm. director DVD season. We had a lot of like bad movies, but there were still like you know we had some fantasy movies, we had some sci-fi movies, we had some good movies sprinkled in no. there. Uh, we had some like really good movies like Doggy Dog and stuff like that. Um, so far, this and and that season was really long with a lot of bad stuff, you know, yeah. lots of lots of uh, uh, peaks and valleys. So f- this this season. No, season four. Uh, it's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve movies. We've watched four, and I'm already feeling like, oh, it's so much crap. I can't take it anymore. Yeah. Because <laughs> other than Mandy, it's just, I mean, like I said, there are there are little specks of of goodness in there, but it's just garbage. And it's also this issue with even Mandy, who which is a good movie. I I'm, I'm not saying it's not. No, yeah, yeah. In the context of all these other movies, even that one sort of melds together to the others, because it's like yeah. it's a revenge story, and Nicolas Cage is old, and it's yeah, it's like it, it sort it, of all goes together because of the context of what we saw before and what we saw after. Yeah, um, like Dark Man, the Looking Glass, back to back. That's it is a lot, lot that's of the lot. same tropes. Yeah, in yeah, all yeah, of those, yeah. and then look at that, and then bank heist and between and worlds. Then between worlds, Jeez. and here we are. Think... Scores a score to settle, which is again, yeah, it's sort of the same. Yeah, I think though. I gotta say, I think a lot of the the our our uh, begrudgment or ire from this season is a lot is from Between Worlds because that movie mm. was a it was it was. I mean, I don't know what it was a trash fire. It's the worst thing I've ever yeah. seen. I mean, it was I mean, so bad. I don't agree. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> not even the worst thing I've seen in this podcast, but it it was trash fire. It was definitely it's, trash. Fire. It's it's close for me. I mean, we we talked about that in that episode. So yeah. You can listen to that if you want to know. Yeah. 
Um, but let's let's then let's move on to a score to settle. So, what, um, what did you expect before? Because we talked a little about it at the end of the last podcast. Yes. About it. it was sort of a wrench thing, and it was. Uh, I said I had some hopes that it could be some fun action because it's this. Yeah, it's he's a revenge movie. He's a revenge movie. He, he's he's this the old cool guy coming out from Chris, uh, from prison. Uh, yeah. I, I heard somewhere I don't remember the name of it, but it, it, there's this new trope that's been very popular. Uh, recently, in the recent like ten years, which is uh, o- o- old man beating young people because he has he knows the old ways, sort of. Yeah, thing. yeah. Uh, and I thought this was gonna be in that vein. It could have uh, been, yeah. I mean, I think that started with like Taken. Yeah, yeah. And you have like re- retired retired old man who shows. It turns out, oh, he is like a super ninja, yeah. master assassin. And then, I mean, it's not that he's, that he's super old, but he's retired. John Wick, of course, is kind of yes. the same thing there. Yeah. Uh, but so, based on our little talk about that, what, what were you expecting in this film? What were you? How, how did you um, go into this movie? Uh, my my expectations were very low because of Between Worlds. This, however, had a higher meta score, not much higher. Barely but higher. higher. <laughs> Barely. It was in the thirties instead of the twenties. Yeah. Um. So. I, I I think I said like it could it could be it could be like really bland and boring like Tokarev or Rage or whatever it's called mm. or it could be um no nah, I I mean that was some, that's basically what I was expecting to be honest uh I was expecting bland boring I thought the poster was kind of cool although that 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 shot is not in the movie no. um <laughs> so yeah I wasn't expecting much and I um. guess that kind of helped because I got to say, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here. Mm. I like the movie, sort of. Yeah. Um, so I went into this again, as I said, hoping for a fun, uh, fun action movie that maybe took itself a little too serious, but still has some fun things. Because uh, because yeah, Cage yeah. can bring the fun, especially in action movies, if he wants oh, to. Yeah. Um, and I, I didn't get that. Um, no, really at all. It was a, it's a very slow, slow movie with uh, even like the fight scene or the gun scenes are very. It feel they feel slow and like almost. Re- I, w- I won't. I don't want to say realistic, but not fun on yeah, purpose. Yeah, exactly. Sort of. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I did enjoy the movie. I mean, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna like. Ask people to watch it. I'm not gonna recommend the movie. I think, but it was it was definitely not a waste of time, and I I had fun with it. Um, but it didn't stick with me afterwards. I'd say, not really. I mean, I I finished it this morning, so mm. I haven't. It haven't left my head yet. Huh? Uh, but I, yeah, I probably won't remember it. <laughs> no. But again, it was. It had some good things, and not just good ideas. It actually executed some good things. Uh, yeah. Throughout the movie, and I think also I think Nicolas Cage was just again we usually do this at the end, but I'll do it at the beginning. Nicolas Cage was I think he was great in this movie. He did some great acting in this. I think. Uh, yes, uh, sporadically. I don't I, think this is like uh, one of his better performances, but he was good. No, no, no. I'm not saying this is like Cage has his best, but it's <laughs> it is the best that we've seen in a while. Uh, yeah. Where he really, he really sells the character. He really, I say, I, you forget it's Nicolas Cage. Uh, yeah, he sells the character and he he sells the emotions and uh, yeah, he, he does a good job, and he has uh, and he has some good material to work from. Um, yes. So yeah, I I, I, I was impressed because it was while it was a while. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I had a good good Nicolas Cage. I I was really if it was something that surprised me was the fact that yeah they describe it as you know a guy who has vowed retribution on, on his mob bosses after 19 years of wrongful imprisonment and like we said that's more of the backdrop what this really is is um him uh, uh, making up for lost time with his now I guess like 30 year old son or whatever like yeah. um and him. Uh, he knew he'd, he'd he before he went away he stashed a bunch of money he got for taking the the blame for for it was a murder the movie starts with a murder 
um, where someone called I'm, I don't know if it's like Nicolas Cage's son or something, but he is he is related to to Nicolas Cage. He's called um, uh, the guy who plays young Frank, as Nicolas Cage is called in this movie, no. called, is called Bailey Coppola. He plays young Frank, and I I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know that at first, but when I saw him, I was like, oh. That is like a dead ringer for a young Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Good, good casting. And I was like, oh, so of course he's. It's, uh, he so Nicolas that. Cage. Nicolas Cage is his uncle. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, he's related to Christopher Coppola, who is his father. Oh. Christopher, is the is that Christopher? <gasps> that's hmm? that's uh, Christopher, director of Deadfall. Coppola. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. It all comes together. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it was. Uh, I think it was. He worked worked at great. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Because it was like, wow, he really looks like Nicolas Cage. Yeah, like, but oh, it, yeah, sense. it's it's more of the looks that he's done a good performance. It's more. Yeah, yeah. it looks he, per, it looks the part. Yeah, but anyway, so he comes out of he comes out of prison, and um, they also set it up like this is his. You know, it's one last ride. Basically, I have I have a limited time to get revenge and also. You know, patch up my relationship with my son because he has like fatal insomnia. Yeah, which, which like I don't know. Is it? Uh, so I did look, look silly, it up, but it, yeah, I guess it's um, maybe it's real. I don't know. It, it is a real disease okay. that exists, but I think it was at twenty twenty two. I think it was there was around thirty something cases recorded ever <laughs> yeah. in the history of ever. So but one it, of them was Nicolas Cage in this movie. Yeah, so, so it exists, but it's extremely rare. And it is very, very fatal. Okay, uh, yeah, so, it makes so sense. It, if you don't so sleep, it's, you it's, eventually it, die. You know. It works in the story, but it is very, like, weird. It's, uh, it's, it's, was... it's sort of like having, uh, I don't remember what, what that disease is called, but the, the people who look like Wolfman, who have, like... Yeah, uh, all the hair, fur, yeah. Yeah, it's like sort of using that as just a... A, a, a backdrop or, or a scenery <laughs> thing is like no that this this is a social rare thing we can't just have that yeah. as a reason sort of wouldn't it I mean this is a nitpick but wouldn't it have just been easier to give him like brain cancer and say, yeah like, it's pushing on your frontal cortex you're gonna have delusions unless you get this you know if, unless you take this brain swelling ma- medicine or something I don't know <laughs> yeah but whatever it's it's a minor thing it doesn't matter it was just what is a sporadic fatal insomnia yeah. or something um uh, yeah anyway um so yeah so that gave you kind of kind of a ticking clock element uh, even though it doesn't really play in too much into the movie um but then yeah it's just him and his son who you know they check into this swanky ass hotel they buy nice clothes they yeah cuz he gets the he gets money that he hid away before he yeah, got yeah yeah Oh. Um, and it's really and, and for a while it's like oh it, it, this is more of a like, more of a drama yeah. and it's it's one of those that <clears throat> you're worried like it might, might, maybe it won't go anywhere but at least it's like it's a cozy movie to watch because you know they, they bicker a little bit of course he's angry that his dad was away for 19 years and but then he says but you know he had the son had drug problems, but he's clean now. And I actually yeah. met someone, and it was like, "Oh, this is really nice." Actually, it's, Maybe- it's, yeah, it's good chemistry between the actors too. Yeah, yeah. You really, really buy this thing that the, the father Nicholas Cage is really doing his best. Maybe not in the best way, but he's doing the best he can to to sort of impress and pamper his son. Yeah, and the son is sort of he he doesn't want to be carried away, but he also misses his father, and he just yeah. it, it's. Really good chemistry, and they both really sell this part of the movie. Unfortunately, yeah. I'd say this is one of the weakest part of the movie for me. Oh, really? That's for me? Because I think it, it was such... so when, when you were like, as you said, when you were like, oh, this is nice. I was, okay, where is the story? Can we <laughs> get on with it? Uh, nothing is really yeah. happening. Yeah, I was I was worried that like okay, this is not going to go anywhere. Yeah, it's just going to be them hanging out for ninety minutes. But then, then the revenge story comes, and like okay, so now we're actually they're they're switching it up, which is good. Mm. Problem is that the revenge stuff is kind of for me. I thought that was kind of boring because yeah, there, there's like two shootouts and they're awful. And then it's just you know it's it's such it's such basic like oh, I'm angry at you so I'm gonna go and buy a gun and then I'm gonna talk to you in your butcher shop and you know, mm. 
But I understand why, because you can't just have two guys hanging out unless you have like, some really good dialogue and very well thought out characters, which yeah. this is this is not. This is. Just I, I would have wanted more of a. Uh, could, could it, it's a very uh, sharp line in the movie where it stops being about the sun and it starts becoming about the revenge. Yeah. I would like that line to be more blurred. I would have I would yeah. have wanted more of the revenge at the beginning and more of the sun at the end. Yeah. Um to to just sort of make it cohesive and make it a, a story. I think that could have worked a lot better. Uh, now it became oh the sto- the sun part is the it's kind of boring with the sun. Uh, and then when that starts to get interested, and it's like, hey, everyone, let's go to the revenge. Okay, now this is boring. What's happening with the sun? And it's like this you're never really satisfied. I felt. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I don't. I don't think. I don't think this, with what we had to work with, I don't think it ever could have been like a great movie. It had. It had. The, it had. You know, elements of a great movie, but it was always going to be like middling. I think that's what it feels like at least. Yeah. Um. You, you know what it reminded me of? A movie that does this kind of story better. Um, it's a movie called... I gotta check if I'm right about this. I think it's called Things Change. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Things Change, from from 1988, written by... Written and directed by David Mamet. Where, um... It's a... It's a... It's a... A a mafia guy who murders someone. Uh, but, you know, he's like... He's like a mafia boss. So he's like, I'm not going to prison, fuck that. Um, instead they, like, they pay the local, uh, like, shoe shiner, an old, an old Italian, like, shoe shiner who has, you know, is basically, basically, like, like, you know, he's poor, you know, and then he said, like, how about we give you a hundred thousand dollars and you take the blame for this, double homicide, you'll, you'll go to prison for 20 years, but, uh, you, you can, you can have fun with this money before, you know, cause he's like 70 years old, so he's gonna mm, die in prison. All right, yeah. And he's like, mm, no, because he's lived a writer's life his whole life and everything. And then eventually it's just like, eh, fuck it. He takes the money. <laughs> and then him and um, a, 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 a lower guy on the on the ladder, played by uh, uh, Joe Mantegna, they go to uh, they go to some like East Coast casino and just you know they get the nicest hotel room. They they play a bunch of you know casino games. They hang out with, with women, and they just. Get up to you know. Get up to no good. And it's 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 a little bit like where's this going? But the because the, the the plot isn't really. There's nothing that really happens. Um, other than they're not supposed to to be there. They're really supposed to stay in the city. But whatever. Um, but it's it's through you know through conversations and and through you know little little things that that the old man does. That you know, there, there's a chemistry, and you you understand why he chose to take the money, and um, it's unconventional, but it works. So this kind of story does work, uh, but you re- you need you need a really good writer, which David Mamet is. So uh, I would recommend that one huh? over over this. <laughs> it, just, it just reminded me of that one. Um, but yeah, so during this movie, I was again, as I said, I felt. It was slow, and I was wondering where it was going, but at the end, because there is... Well, we had this, also this sort of subplot with um, uh, a, a prostitute, or an escort. Yeah, yeah. Which is... Uh, I don't know if... I can't decide if it's needed or if it should be cut out. Because it takes a lot of time <sighs> of the movie, it doesn't really lead anywhere, but it does explore his character a, a bit. Yeah, and I think I think that is it. Like this is, this is al- almost character driven. It yeah. wants to be character driven, but then there is that plot of, of revenge stuff in there. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I don't think uh, whatever what's his name was Sean 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 Koo? No, what was his name? Oh yeah, Sean Koo. Sean Koo. Yeah. I don't think he's a strong enough writer to to write a character driven drama like this. I guess, and I think that's why he maybe added in the the the, the revenge stuff. Um, but like I said, like it it, it almost succeeds in being character driven. I mm. mean, it 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 even goes so far as to 
uh, you know, Nicolas Cage, what is Frank Carver, decides to kind of not uh, uh, take out revenge on the main guy when he eventually finds him. Instead, he's like, oh, yeah, you, you held up your end until you had a stroke, basically, because he realizes yeah. that he, yeah, he's, uncon- he's been unconscious for, like, 10, 15 years. Um, but then, of course, you know, the, the, they, they have to add a little twist that his best friend back in the day took over the business, and he was the one who, who, uh, who, who screwed him over. Yeah. Because then we find out, c- kind of unceremoniously, uh, that the son has been dead since like 2005 or whatever. Yeah, that it was this twist ending sort of. That it was, uh, so sort of a um, what is it called? There's another movie we use it's the same trope, um, which, which someone talks with it with. Oh yeah! Someone threw it in time movie, and then at the end we realize there's they're not there. Anyway, it's it's an old trope. It's been done several times. Yeah, you're not thinking of certain. Sixth Sense, are you? Because that's when we find out that the protagonist is dead. Oh no no no! Okay yeah. No. Um, Spoilers for Sixth Sense. I, <laughs> I think it's fine. I think you, the, it's fine. The greatest twist ending of all time. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, no, I know, yeah, I know but anyway, mean, but I, I it, think, and I think that twist, that twist really. When that happened, yes, it is very, very out of nowhere. It's very unceremoniously, but that's the entire movie is very unceremoniously. It's just, yeah, things just happen, and I, I felt that that was one of the strongest part of the movie. That it is, again, it becomes character driven because we don't put any flair on things happening. Yeah, um, and I think the twist really for me sort of tied the entire movie together, and it, it really made the movie work, that twist for me. That the son is dead? Yeah, that just, okay. it just, it just made the entire, it just lifted the entire movie for me. Uh, that, because it, it was a good reveal, and it made a lot of sense, and it, yeah. most of the complaints I had was sort of explained away. That's, oh, oh, that makes sense. Because okay. yeah. throughout the entire movie, one of my biggest, Gripes was this, can't you just let go? Just let go of the revenge and just be with your son. And everyone is telling him to just have a life, have a good life, even yeah. his son is. And we're like, why are you doing this, you stupid idiot? And then at the end, oh, because he, he doesn't have anything to go to. True, he true. can't live. And, and all of his stupid decision and all of his weird flair of just more of spending money on worthless things sort of. It, all of it makes sense because he doesn't have anything else to do with the money. Yeah, and he is—he doesn't have anyone, and he because he has like weeks or months left to d- live, he can't start again. He can't build a new life. Uh, so what else is there? And I think that really sort of made the movie work for me. Yeah. No. Yeah, I I, I agree. It, it it was a it was a good. Um... It was a good twist. It was just like, oh, oh, oh okay. When we, when he he puts down flowers at his wife's grave, and then he moves over, and you're like, Joey, huh? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, he's dead. Yeah, and it's this. And then a it, quick it, like montage of all the scenes where they hung out, but it's just him. It's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it does work. It was just you know, it could have been handled better, you know. Yeah, but, but that's, I, that's, that's, I don't that's think a, the movie thi- wanted it to be handled better. I don't okay. think that's the point. The point is that it's supposed to be blunt and it's supposed to be told with a shrug. Like, and it's dead. It's not to be, it's not supposed to be this big, again, Sixth Sense is a perfect example where the big zoom in and the big flashing images is like, oh, this happened, it all made sense, it's, oh, it's this big thing. It's just, yeah, his life is shit. Oh yeah, it wouldn't have been better if they did something like that. Because yeah. I mean, he he knew that his son was dead, so it, would, yeah. it couldn't have been like a no. It was wrong. Yeah. It was wrong. You no, know, that wouldn't have worked, of course. I mean, that would have been funny, but yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't have been good. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, I don't really have much else to say about the movie. <laughs> uh, should we talk a little bit about uh, Nicolas Cage? And yeah, his performance. Uh, yes. As I said, I really enjoyed his performance in this. Um, yeah. I think he 
he sold the awkward, awkward dad who trying to be hip for the kid, but not really understanding anything he's doing. And yeah. also sort of this, um, the pain, also again, which makes a lot of sense after we get the reveal. Yeah. Uh, that, that he has this pained expressions. Sort of every time throughout the movie when it's quiet, when he's not talking with anyone, yeah. he's, he has this very like painful and sad and expressions. Which again, I didn't get until the reveal. And then, like, oh, that makes sense. It, it's per- perfectly portrayed, this uh, living in a fantasy world, uh, or living... In, he wants to live in a fancy world where his son is still alive. Yeah. Um, and putting on a brave face in front of people. Um, so I, I think it was it was great. Again, not his best performance he have ever. Uh, not, a, uh, not at all. Um, but it is the greatest we've had in a while. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I, would, I would say... Yeah, since... It, uh, uh, if we talk, because Army One was really fun, but that was not a, a like. He he didn't. It was not a, a straight performance. Which one? It was uh, Army of One. Oh, Army. That was one. that was more of a like a comedic performance. Yeah. Uh, but last time we had a good like serious performance. I would say like Dog Eat Dog maybe. <laughs> yeah. Possibly dark, but it's hard to know because dark is dark. Yeah, dark is. Dark. Dark is weird. Yeah, that, that's... It's an interesting movie. Uh, but yeah, it's hard to gauge his performance in that movie. Yeah. No. So yeah, it's, it's the best since Doggy Dog for me. Yeah. Definitely. No, he, 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 he was good. Uh, sometimes maybe felt a little phoned in. But for the most part, I think I think he saw potential. Like we talk a lot about like why he picks movies like this. Mm. Why he does smaller roles. Or uh, smaller movies. Is because he sees potential and hey, maybe this is like the next big guy, you know, to make movies or whatever. Um, and this one felt like that. Like he he saw potential in in the script and then of course in the director since he wrote it. Um, and I, I I feel like he he gave maybe they gave it all, but he gave it you know he gave it a whole college try. Um, so yeah, I, I I liked his performance as well. We also did get uh, some not like top ten, but we got some pretty good rage cage moments in this. Yeah. That was um, good. Yeah, we have the the one of two really uh, scenes where his his uh, his uh, sickness is affecting him mm. um, when he comes back and like falls over on the floor in the hotel room, and there's mm. this long sequence where he's just lying on the floor and then he tries to get his phone out and but he's been in prison so he doesn't know how a, a smartphone works. So he calls over yeah. a bellhop and like, hey, could you help me call my son? And it goes on forever. That scene could have been cut down to like him just going like, I don't understand. I don't understand his phone and then leaving. Because that's really what he does. He yeah, leaves. but then we keep on going. It just keeps on going. The scene with, <laughs> with the pimp who appears. Yeah. The guy sits down and starts writing a list of all the nursing homes in the area. Yeah. Then the pimp... Co- no, first the the, uh, the prostitute comes in and it's the oh, right. prostitute. And he's like, get the hell out of here. And then the pimp comes in like, hey, you touched her, so now you pay me. And he's like, fuck you. And all this, well, him, him he, he's acting super drunk. He is drunk. He's been drinking yeah. and his insomnias. And it's just, it's like 10 minutes of <laughs> yeah. just what is going on. Well, uh, I really like that scene. <laughs> it was, it was such, I, especially because we, like, it's, Several times, the camera sort of just pans back to the bellhop and the yeah, sofa, and, like, and uh, just yeah, when, just when remember he's still out. here anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I think yes, you could have cut that scene down, but I think it was one of the. It is one of the highlights. So. One of the highlights. Of the yeah, movie, I'm definitely. glad it didn't. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but it's it's also funny because it starts out really sad. He comes back, his son yeah. isn't there. And then he falls over, but then it slowly becomes more and more comedic and chaotic. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not sure if that was what, what if that was intentional or if it just if it just happened. Because yeah. it was one of those happy little accidents. Um, what really funny though is in the next scene he seems pretty clear, you know, in his head. Oh. Um, and he uh, his son calls on the phone. He instantly. Uh, presses it and manages to get you know uh, speakerphone and he he gets uh, 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 directions on 
we find out though, that that might be fake because he didn't call his son. That that might be why. But in the moment, all of a sudden he knows how to work the phone. He's very cl- clear-minded. He gets the GPS directions to point him where to go to find his son. He's like, hey, six seconds ago you could barely yeah. stand up and you didn't know what a phone was. What? Well, hello? Yeah, but but again, that's... It is explained it with the twist yeah. that yeah, know, nothing of that ever happened. Yeah. He he probably just sort of ha- just sat down. He probably went from the kicking out the pimp, <laughs> go went and just sat sat down in the bathroom, and just had this whole fantasy that is this. He's having this fantasy of saving his son, and this is how he would do it, and yeah. all of these things that and. Again, it's um, sort of if you think of the. Um, this is a big stretch, but that's what I was thinking of now. <laughs> yeah, that's good, uh, yeah, but yeah. the the end of Big Fish. Oh, oh I've never actually finished that movie. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it's it's this thing where he's like suddenly he's great and GPS, and suddenly he's not Big Fish, but in this movie, oh, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. suddenly he's just he's just this superhero who can just find him and carry him and make him like doing CPR until he survives and is all of these things yeah. and that is because real. it is his fantasy yeah, that's yeah, yeah. what he wanted he is he is really low in this scene he's drunk he's tired he had this issue with the, the pimp and he's just he needs a win yeah so he just made makes a win up makes sense yeah it's just in the moment it's it just yeah. like what what is going on here yeah and you could definitely chop it up to like lazy screenwriting to say all of the plot holes were fantasy. It's yeah. the the it's sort of the same thing of oh it was all a dream. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so you I could definitely see how how you would be think it's lazy writing, but I think it works for me personally. I think yeah. it really works. Yeah. No, I agree. It works for the most part. Yeah. Or, or at least you, or at least you can excuse some of the weird stuff when you're like, yeah. oh, that's why. Yeah. Uh, but then there was the other rage cage moment. moment yes, mentioned. and that is uh, in the very end when he goes to because he he gets invited to a, to a wedding in the middle of all of this. Yeah. With his old friend Q, Sam San Quinn, played by uh, what's his name, Benjamin Bratt. Who you know? We find out he took over the whole the whole. He business. is the bad. He's yeah. the actual bad guy. And he, he was him who killed his son. We find out. Mm. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, he says as he's like he's shield, he's shielding his daughter, and he says, "Hey, like d- don't hurt her. I'm the one you got beef with." And he's just like, "What beef?" Beef? I got beef with you. <laughs> he just kept saying beef, <laughs> beef. <laughs> Warm and just, hey, you killed my son, and I you say I got beef with you. And then asking the daughter, hey, yeah. <laughs> your dad killed my son. You think we have beef? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Uh that that was that was almost uh uh Ghost Rider 2 uh, vibes. <laughs> not, yeah. not quite. Not nothing's ever going to hit that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the best one is with that scene. It is over the top rage cage, but it does really work where we are in the movie <laughs> plot wise. Yeah. Yeah, Cuz he is of course, he's yeah. del- he's delirious and he just found out all this information about his son and Q and all of these things. Yeah, and he was just uh, shot. So he's yeah, and he just shot. So it it is, it is it works. But it's it, not <laughs> as in sort of Ghost Rider where it's just it's like okay, this is kind of silly. This is like <laughs> you can sort of feel the pain and the the yeah. anger. It's it's uh, it's just it's just the choice of word. Beak in the super yeah. in super emotional scene, he keeps saying beef. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's oh, it's it's great. It's a great scene. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then as he's about to leave, he's like, "Fine, I'll let you live. I don't care anymore." The daughter just picks up the gun and shoots him, and he's just like, "Doesn't even react." He's like, "Huh?" But what the? Hell? You shot me, and then just keeps walking. Like, All right then. It was like, why? Why was that in there? <sighs> <sighs> anyway, and then yeah, he, he steps out of the church. The cops are there. With a with a with a bad sound effect like put the gun down, like yeah, the director yeah. masking his voice or something, and then you know, you think he's gonna pull out the gun, but he 
he pulls out the baseball card that, you know, he, he saved for his son. Mm. And then they shoot him with super obvious squibs. And then he dies. Yeah. Well, no, because the, the hallucination of oh. his son come back. Uh, so he sees his son the last time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's a bittersweet ending. Yeah. But, uh, to, to a, like I said, to a pretty, pretty okay movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I could, I could. I mean, like I said, I maybe probably won't recommend it to anyone, no. but like, my dad would probably like it, even though he would think that this the ending is too sad because he he likes when people just, you know, wins are all friends in the end and yeah. lives. Yeah, like oh yeah, and then they they were he had his son and they 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 bought more sports car and everyone's happy. He doesn't like sad endings, so that wouldn't that, work. That, but I think the that, rest he would actually like. That classic ending in in movies and shows where <laughs> everyone is in someone's backyard and having a barbecue. Yes, yes, yes. What yes, is it? It's like um, is it gone in sixty seconds? Ends like that. Uh, yeah, and like every every Fast and Furious movie. Ends yeah, like every Fast. Yeah. It's about family. Yeah, salute me, familio. Um, oh, if you want to watch a movie that ends that way, <laughs> but it's it's a very very strange movie, and it almost has like a like a. Like this, this weird like feeling all over the ending, even though it's happy. Uh, it's a Netflix movie, I think, f- called "I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore." Have you seen that one? Uh, no. Starring uh, shit. Well, um, Elijah Wood, but he's like second, second lead. Uh, it's the lady. What's her name? So oh, fuck. I don't. Uh, Melanie Linsky. Yes, Melanie Linsky. Yes. Indie movie darling Melanie Linsky, yeah. Mm. That one ends also with a, it ends with a barbecue, and you're like, yeah. oh, they're they're really, they're really good friends now, but there was some weird shit going on like ten minutes ago. Are we going <laughs> to talk about this? <laughs> huh? uh, I'll put it on the list. Yeah, yeah, check it out. Huh? Um, but yeah, that's all really I have to say about uh, a score to settle. I was pleasantly surprised. I gotta say, yeah. Yeah, um, and it, I, was, I, it was above average, a drama. Yeah, which I wish. And, it, and I, it's this it's this kind of um, I don't know how to. How, I don't know if, if there's a name for it, but like guy drama. Yeah, uh, where, where like a guy is sad, uh, but it, but he also has a gun, and he also <laughs> fucks women and drives cars, but he's really sad. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I don't think there's a name for it, but I do like those movies. It's yeah. like, it's like, uh, yeah, it's the uh, there, there is, there is. It's not, it's not an official name, but there is a subgenre called dudes rock, which this <laughs> kind of is. But then it has to be mm. a little more. Uh, it has to be a little more cool in it. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, a b- bunch of the stoic men who you know holds in their feelings, and in the yeah. end they're like, God we can't, damn it! We, we, we can't talk anyway. about we can't talk about feelings. Yeah, but we we have to, but we can see it on their face. Exactly, and there's there's big, oh. usually there should be <laughs> at least one guy needs to have a big nice beard, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, the perfect uh, beard movie or whatever guy movie <laughs> is a uh, hostile. Check out hostiles. Oh my <laughs> god. So many, so many men holding back tears, walking through the woods, big beards, uh, quick, short, you know, very violent action scenes. It's, ah, oh, it's beautiful. Uh, that one I can guy, recommend guy as drama. well. <laughs> guy drama. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's uh, a, it's a man crime movie, if you want. No. That could be a good name for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's a, it's an above average movie, but it's, there isn't a lot again. The twist, I think, the twist really binds to get the movie together and makes it work. But there's not much to analyze or talk about more than yeah, because it is that's stupid. It's weird to say about this movie, but it's a whole experience. You can't talk about one thing in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You really have to experience it for yeah, yourself. But, but that's mostly because no scene. To. There's like few scenes, like yeah. maybe three, that works in isolation. No, yeah, exactly. If you, if you just put, put, take a scene from this movie, it's like, this is shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, um, it really is like, it's you can't really see the forest for the trees if you just watch one yeah. scene, yeah. Because that's just one tree. You really need to watch the entire forest. 
Um, it was like I was I was going to write on Letterboxd when I when I was reviewing this. I was going to write like maybe maybe I got brain damage from from watching so many bad Nick Cage movies, but I kind of like this one. And I was like, <laughs> no, that's boring. So then I just wrote beef, <laughs> beef. <laughs> that's a better review. Uh, uh, weird trivia about this movie. Yeah, <laughs> which I think is it, it just it just speaks so much for Nicolas Cage. That this was the movie he decided to learn to play piano for. Yeah, really shows he he did he was dedicated. He learned yep, to play piano like, for this. Yeah, all right. And, and for we one found out scene. he's a pretty good singer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's only for one scene he plays piano, and <laughs> yeah. that scene you you it's like one shot you see him actually hitting the notes. So you could have just had a like a stunt. Of yeah, a they stunt could have dance. easily faked it. But easily, no, he he went all in. Hey, kudos, yep. man. <laughs> Um, then, uh, I read, uh, what was else? I read something else. No, no, that was about it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, they talk about young Frankie is played by Bailey Coppola, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, so, reviews. Like yes. we said earlier, uh, it has a 37 meta score, which is pretty bad. And I think, undeservedly so. I mean, I wouldn't put it much higher, but I would put it higher than that. Um, there's only six reviews. Uh, people aren't really caring anymore. The best it got was a five out of ten from Film Stage, and their little quote here from the review is so weird. So I'll just, I'll just read all of it. The potential to open things up with secondary characters like a prostitute who takes an inexplicable shine to Frank and her obnoxious pimp trip is there to capitalize on. Ku and Newman would rather cut that bait loose, however, and let Cage go wild instead. It's a jarring tonal shift. Like, how much more could you do with the prostitute and the pimp? That was fun for one yeah. scene, really. Yeah. Uh, another one here, Los Angeles Times, also a 5 out of 10. Without Cage, there'd be almost no reason to see the by the numbers revenge thriller a score to settle. With him, the movie isn't just watchable, it's occasionally riveting. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't mention that. We usually mention that, like... If this was any other actor, I would have turned it off in about 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Because uh, at least when he's in it, you know that maybe it'll be fun at some point. <laughs> yeah. Um, then some more middling reviews. Uh, and the, the lowest it got was a 30, which makes it kind of weird then that the, the, the median score is a 37. It feels like it should be like a 40 or something. Whatever. Mm-hmm. New York Times, they write, not even John Newman's distressingly awful dialogue can slow Cage's role to a historic finish. Histrionic finish, sorry. Yeah, I guess. Mm. Um, oh, here's actually one from Hollywood Reporter. They, 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 that's a good good quote. Ku shows a decent grasp of plot mechanics, but never manages to adequately develop the characters or effectively modulate the film's pacing, even in the brief action scenes with proved too tame by typical Cage standards. Yeah, that sums yeah. up pretty fucking well. Kudos Justin Loeb, yeah. who wrote that. But uh, yeah, the pacing is off. Yes, that is. It, when it goes from from family drama to revenge movie, we're like, oh, oh okay, we're here yeah. now. So what are the uh, what are the uh, the user reviews? Yeah, so IMDb it's four point seven, so pretty pretty bad for IMDb. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Did uh, Between have Worlds a- have a higher score. Wasn't that like no. a five? No, it wasn't. No, that was like that was like three point oh, okay. uh, six, Fuck. I think. Okay. So it's like one score about about <laughs> around. Yeah. Um so there's a few I found that I thought was really uh resonated with me, how I felt about the movie. Okay. There is one, uh which is a is a six six out of ten. Uh mediocre storyline sandwiched by a good performance from Cage. Mm. Uh this is a longer, but right. Well, I had a very little expectations to this 2019 movie from writer John Stewart Newman and director Sean Q. Why? Well, it is a Nicolas Cage movie. Need I say more? Again, <laughs> we have these the, the bad the people who doesn't understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't claim to be a fan of his in any way. Sure, he puts on the occasional good movie, but they are few and far apart. Regardless, I had the chance to watch Scored Cell, so I sat down to watch it, as I tend to watch movies that I haven't already seen before. And I'm glad that I did. 
Because this movie was definitely one of Nicolas Cage's better performances and the movie were where you actually get to see him having acting talents. <clears throat> While the movie itself was sort of mediocre, Cage actually managed to lift it up and out of mediocrity with his impressive performance. The storyline in Scorch Settle definitely had the potential. Sure, it didn't offer much of anything new to the genre, but it's still enjoyable enough for its turnout to be. Aside from Nicolas Cage, the movie has some nice performances by the likes of Benjamin Bratt, Noah LaGrosse and Carolyn Widra. I can't claim to be familiar with n neither uh, Noel LeGrosse or Carolyn Widra, but he definitely performed well in this movie. A score to, to settle is an, adequ is an adequate movie, if you have nothing more pressing to your watch list. <laughs> While it wasn't outstanding, it was still good enough for a single viewing. My rating of score to settle would have been very mediocre, 5 out of 10, given the flatline storyline, but Nicolas Cage's performance lifted the movie up a notch. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, we knew. We knew. <laughs> Or we found out at least. Yeah. Uh, so that was uh, one that really I felt that's I I agree a lot with that review. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. It is it is not a great movie, but Nicolas Cage really lifted above the the others. Yeah. Uh, then there was this other which I also thought about. That I also also resonated. Uh, would be a great film if it if played at one point <laughs> five speed. <laughs> yeah. For starters, all the ones are just bonehead amateur reviews. This film. All Thing Considered is a solid 7 out of 10, and here's why. It is clearly a low-budget, B-grade film. You have a novice director, only a second full-length fe feature film. Other four are shorts and TV films, Sean Koo, who did a fairly decent job uh, with the camera, but needed work with directing his, ca his cast, except, the, yeah. except Cage, who was awesome on his own. Then you have a great conceptual story that was written by totally green newbie writer John Stuart Newman in his second full-length feature film. Yes, there was a plot, plot issues, and yes, the slow pacing was atrocious that the 103-minute length felt ridiculously long. Yeah. But nevertheless, Nicolas Cage kept, his film, kept this film afloat, with some help from Benjamin Bratt, who certainly needed better directing in the beginning. In, his fil in this film... Uh, if this film was properly edited and the pacing sped up 1.5 uh, times, it would have been an entirely different, different, much better viewing experience. The score was decent and the cinematography on point. It's a shame the producers didn't decide to edit this better, because Cage deserved better for his performance. Nevertheless, rating this film based on his own performance, merits and value, it's a solid 7 and 10 for me. I still enjoyed it, but wanted more. Yeah, so and there are some yeah. fair fair reviews on this, which proves that yes. you know it has potential, definitely. Yeah. Um, also, just one that I I thought was uh, uh, great. Wait, damn, I lost it. Um, the Nicholas, here it is. This is the entire review. Nicholas Cage is still a great actor. Just gotta find the right move to act in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Yep. Yep. I, I like this one. Seven out of ten. Ignore bad reviews. This is a good movie with a surprise in it. If you like Cage, just see it. Nah. So it's like, hey, there's a surprise. You better watch it. Oh, okay, I gotta watch it. Yeah, but it, it feels like the most most people who dislikes the movie, uh, gives like very bad, uh, is that it is too slow. Yeah, uh, that it is it is a slow movie, and it's most people are bored. That's that's what that's what all the ones and twos are about. It's yeah. Slow and it's boring, and all the good reviews, which is around seven and eight, they are talking about Nicolas Cage is great, movie needs some work, but there's it it is definitely a good movie, but it could be better. Yeah, sort of. yeah. Uh, and I, I I feel that that's what I think about the movie too. Yeah. Uh, and I I maybe some maybe a re-edit of the movie could work. Maybe I don't know. Maybe because uh, I think I think again the. Story for what it is is solid, uh, and uh, the acting is mostly good. Um, so it's just if maybe if you if you just tighten it up a bit, maybe change up the pacing with editing. Yeah. maybe it could work. I don't know. Yeah, def definitely cut down some stuff. Uh, yeah, honestly. I know we love the scene, but if you want to be really objective about it, the first thing you would cut down is the the, the freak the out scene in the hotel. Storyline. Yeah, the pimp. Yeah, come, please. Yeah, <laughs> you could cut it, out a also, good ten minutes there. <laughs> also, he doesn't even make sense. Why in this really fancy hotel, which is it feels like it's out out in the nowhere, sort of out of yeah. like it's a big mansion, which this is like gated too. 
Yeah. Why, why do they have this, like, gang pimp hanging outside? Yeah, it felt like uh, just, just just around the corner of this, yeah, this gated million-dollar mansion, uh, you know, uh, community, there was this, you know, we had a... Uh, we had a bunch of gangsters hanging out in a in a trailer selling guns yeah. and drugs, and then we had yeah pimps and their hoes. Like, where is this taking place? <laughs> yeah, you, 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 it could would have been made so much better, and it uh, if we just if we put in a guy in a suit instead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just have this guy who is he's not working for the hotel, but the hotel lets him be there. Yeah, a bit more he, classy. He, he, he yeah, and he talks classy, and he. Does that and he gives the card and says, "If you need something, you can get. I can fix anything for you." Sort of like that, and we could still have the same scene yeah, yeah, yeah. if we wanted it. Just it just he didn't fit. Um, but again, that is the first storyline. Is the whole pimp and the prostitute? I would say is what I would cut out. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I will jumble again the the revenge scenes and the uh, father son scenes. I would jumble them around so we have a little of both all the time. Yeah. Maybe that. On the days he's with the sun, and on the nights he's out hunting, and we get this thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, maybe something, something like that, and he tries to hide it for his son, and yeah. So no, uh, yeah, I agree. So, so some editing I think would make good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so, uh, what 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 will you be scoring this movie? So I'm gonna. I'm, I've been. Going back and forth since I've seen it, I saw it uh, like a week ago, I think. Okay. Um, so, so I've been, I've been thinking about it for a while, and I've been going back and forth between a, a strong six and a very weak seven. Okay. Uh, but I think I, I think I'll go with a strong six, um, because yeah, it could, it's just right to seven, but it's not enough to become a seven. Yeah. So yeah, a, a strong six. That's that's where I'm at. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna land, uh, and this is this is. Uh, I, I think I've had this discussion maybe on another podcast, but uh, or I know I've had it in in real life. Um, that I, I think at least at least when it comes to some reviewers, like the the, the scores are too high. Like when we read some of the reviews that you read, they felt more like mm. five or six out of ten the way they were written. But then mm. the game like seven or you talked maybe even giving it an eight. It's like. This is very down the. It's middle of the road. Even if it's a good movie, it's still very middle of the road. Pretty cheap looking movie and everything, which for me is a that's a that's a five, like middle of the road. So I'm I'm, I'm giving it, even though it's a, it's an enthusiastic, it's a five out of ten. Yeah. yeah okay. Yep. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I I just think that the performance just pushes over one at one. Um, yeah. And again, there's there's so few things you could change to make this a a, a seven or maybe an eight. I think yeah. just a few changes. So yeah, yeah. Performance um, wise, yeah, it is it is just on the border of yeah. of, of a six out of ten. But I'll I'll stick with a five. Uh, uh, yeah, that was scores a score to settle. Yeah. First of six movies he was he released in two thousand nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> um. And next week we'll do one of the movies that actually sort of inspired the podcast for me at least, why I, uh, I had the idea, because uh, I saw a review of this movie. So unfortunately, I, I know a lot about it without ah. seeing the movie. Um, but Col- Color Out of Space, the based on H.P. Lovecraft, right? I yes, think. yes, yes. Um, the Master of Horror. Uh, yeah. So I saw a re- again. I saw a review of this. Uh, before we started this podcast, before we had the idea, and then I was that was sort of hit me. It it got me the same idea that we got with Uncut Gems. Is I felt is Nicolas Cage really good? Okay, is he good really? <laughs> I think he is, but I don't know. Yeah. Um. And then I looked in because I I uh I was thinking I, I how much have I seen? And I started scrolling through IMDb. I've seen nothing. That he's done. <laughs> um. So yeah, and then I, I uh, came to you with the idea of Nicolas Cage this time. Yeah. So uh, this this is the movie that's inspired the the whole podcast, at least from the idea perspective. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm very excited for it. I, I I think it's from what I I haven't I have on purpose not seen the review again. I've tried to forget as much as I can from the review, 
Uh, but I'm very excited, and I think I'm going to like it a lot. Yeah, uh, I saw this. I, this is one I have seen back in the day when it came out. Mm. I went and saw it in the cinema. Um, and it's uh, it's an interesting one, definitely. Uh, yeah. Directed by Richard Stanley, who, you know, the, the kook. Uh, mm. The guy who made, uh, what's it called? The Island of Dr. Moreau, where he a- yeah. almost gave up on life and just <laughs> decided to live in the woods. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that story. We'll talk more about that. No, I haven't, okay. but we'll talk about it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's an interesting movie. I won't say anything more than that. But yeah, mm. I'm looking forward to rewatching it. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to follow along uh, next week, uh, check out Color Out of Space. I'm sure you can find it online. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, but that's gonna have to be it for this week. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're listening on YouTube, or you know, follow or hit like or whatever on any other podcast platform you're listening to this. And if you want to support the show even more, listen to these episodes in advance. Check us out on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Three bucks a month gives you exclusives. Well, exclusive episodes of my other podcast, not of this podcast. Uh, but it will get you access, exclusive access. But that's it. Like I said, uh, thank you so much for listening, and we'll be back next week. But until then, have a good one. Bye. Bye, everyone. Madness in the Method is part of Please Don't Make a Scene. It is produced and directed by Tobias Vidin and hosted by Tobias Vidin and Christopher Berlin. Executive producer is Annika Vidin. A huge shout out goes to all our patrons on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Mom, Dad, Laura Kinney, Danny Del Gaiso, Christopher Berlin, Mac and Mom, and Sika85.